Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Let's Learn StarCraft. Today, we are doing a brief examination of some of the late game tactics that exist in Zerg vs. Terran with some contextual examples. What we've done thus far in the Zerg vs. Terran matchup is we spent some time talking about the core strategy that exists in the game. We've taken a look at some sample Zerg vs. Terran games to see that full arc of the broad strokes right here listed in action. And we just got done with a very long episode talking about the subtleties of getting from the early game to the mid game, specifically this element two in, um, in this broad strokes of ZVT. What I want to talk about is this late game multi-pronged attack, harass, defend while taking more bases phase for both players. And it depends a little bit on if Terran is going for the mass bio and science vessel style or whether the Terran is going for this mech switcheroo style. And I want to do some investigation of each of these and talk about some of these tactics in practice. We have gotten the opportunity to see some of these um, in the core strategy, in the um, um, just sort of summary examples game, but I want to make sure that we're spending some time looking at them up close and personal. So I want to start with a game between Flash and Zero, who I will no doubt call Hero many, many times. So in this game, and in all of these games, we're going to do this. We're going to step to the late game, where in this particular match, Zerg's about to get to his Defilers. Flash, our Terran player, is going for a bio-focused play. And... Zero, oh, that was close. Zero is going for a more traditional Zerg uh, defense, which is laying Lurker eventually into Ultralisk. So I am timing this oh so exquisitely. 1345 is what I had written down here. Where we're going to see this transition from some of these early mid game moments to a real late game moment. Right here, once these start to go down, this is where Zerg's kind of in hold on, defend as the game goes on into late game. So what are some of these tactics? I want to talk first from the Terran point of view. And I want to emphasize what the vessels and those marines, oops, what those vessels and those marines are doing. So I want you to think of the Marines kind of as the, um, you know, uh, like in uh, American football, like the blockers. I don't even know enough of the language for <laughs> that. But I want you to think of these. These Marines and medics as sort of the sweepers that push out and gobble up the space. And then that lets the dropships, the vessels, and the tanks do things. Think of that as first my marines are moving out and sweeping the space so that my vessels, my dropships, and my tanks can do things. Here's what I don't want you to mess up. I don't want you to think as, oh, dropships can do this, and vessels can do that, and oh, bio can do this. I guess I'll try to do a mixture of all of these at once. You'll wind up getting lucky sometimes, winning hilariously, or blowing everything catastrophically. You want to make sure that the Marines are the escort service. Boy, I should have chosen my language better there. They are the escorts. I'd, I want to use this word, damn it. Give me this. They are escorting everything else into the good positions. So notice how these Marines were able to move forward, permitting these tanks to move here. All of the bio is sweeping forward out on the map, which is letting the vessels kind of move freely here. All this bio is moving out on the map, which lets this expansion go up. These are some of the core concepts um, that go on in the matchup. Everything's connected to these Marines moving out. So, what is some important stuff to be doing as we see the Zerg has taken this top base, has taken this... Zerg has all this various space here. 
let's watch some of these tactics in action kind of up close. The vessels and the marines, they are moving together as a unit because the vessels can see if there's any lurkers to prevent the marines from going off and dying. But remember, the marines are what are pushing out on the map to enable the vessels. These vessels are the first thing that you should think about retreating, okay? Everything's getting up here. First basic tactic, getting here. People kind of send their units willy-nilly. And, you know, there was a period in time where I just said, damn it, I need to learn Terran versus Zerg from the Terran side of things. I'm going to play some Terrans. And often what I would do is I would just march my army out here and just lose all my vessels or throw my Marines away. I wouldn't understand the relationship between these. Being able to show up to this place safely is something that must be done thoughtfully. The vessels are the first thing that need to retreat. The Marines are what need to lead. Now that you're here, you can begin to say, what are some of the basic tactics I can do here? Most basic one is irradiating these defilers. Always irradiate defilers first, if you can. You're looking to just eat up that time. I'll talk a little bit more about the Zerg vs. Terran tactics in the late game versus bio in a moment. But suffice to say that this is why the Terran forces are so far forward. Zerg wants to do these little counterattacks. If, if we look at this, there's three lurkers, there's less than 12 Zerglings, and there's one Defiler. This is a small investment for Terran or for Zerg in the grand scheme of things. It is like 450 gas and some Zerglings. It's not even that much larva. One hatch could produce this in less than a minute. So what's powerful about this type of move for Zerg? Well, if Zerg could place this Dark Swarm in these Lurkers here, as we have seen in previous Zerg vs. Terran strategy videos, if Zerg can place that here, Terran loses this expansion. Or at the very least, Terran has to lift off this expansion for a minute. So you heard me say step one of late game Zerg vs. Terran is moving out on the map. Why are all these forces here? So that Terran can siege, retreat, and uh, prop himself up here, which is still a long ass ways from this vulnerable expansion. Expansion, excuse me. So these are the types of losses that are not really losses. Obviously, retreat and save what you can. Obviously. But Flash wants to both push out on the right side of the minimap and push out on the left side of the minimap. He wants to push out on all sides. He's not looking to do one big force movement. Sieges himself right up here. Okay. We see once again Flash establishing space with Marines, establishing space with Marines, following with vessels, and getting a scan to try to see what's here. Th there's something that is hilariously simple about watching Flash play and watching really good Terran players play. When you watch okay Struggle Bear Terrans play, they're trying to do a lot of different things at once. There's a drop here and a drop here. And they're trying to micro at the front and have two vessels harass an expansion. There's like five different points of action. Often when you watch Flash, he is doing one large point of action. And he's doing it very strongly. And I want this to sort of sink in for you to see this from the Terran perspective in this game. So Terran is only really here. He's doing these scans. The Marines, notice the Marines came here first. The scan showed up and only now are the vessels really moving forward. And now they're looking for this very juicy defiler. Looking for other juicy targets. 
And in terms of the points of attack, Flash is really drilling this hard. Now, the main reason he's able to drill hard here is because there's no more lurkers. He killed off the lurkers. Yes, the dark swarms are there, but there's Zerglings under there. Run past them and just take out the buildings. Uh, in case you didn't know, buildings are not affected by dark swarms. So you can just always deal damage to buildings. Vessels are here to pick off any incoming defilers, such as this one. See that this cool tactic? Vessels irradiating one another to be able to um, kill off the drones. Cool. This is the kind of optical illusion that this matchup... Uh, if you're a Zerg player, you'll kind of think that this is how it works. Or if you're a weak Terran player, you'll fall into this trap. This looks like Terran doing vessel stuff here. Marines hitting this base here. All sorts of different things happening. This is really one attack where Terran's going hard. These loop-de-loop -loop actions are very nice to ensure that the vessels are still moving at maximum speed. They have a small acceleration. And this was just a very nice play. But recall what I said step one was. Step one of late game Terran is not where do you attack, where do you irradiate, where do you drop, how do you set that stuff up. It's the gobbling up of space on the map. So here I've rewound the game a little bit. Remember this attack that came out on the side and how I said that's good that Flash took this space. Now Flash is moving forward, taking more space up on the map. While all this is going on, very easy to just think, oh my gosh, I must try to do other attacks and all this stuff. Nope. Flash just keeps moving forward with Marines to keep commanding the space. More importantly, he's just going to the same place he's already attacking. So pulling back to try to pick off as much as he can. Trying to finish off this hatchery. This is great. As much as it is fun to talk about the offensive stuff that's going on. Look at this cool micro, this cool micro, all this stuff. Taking expansions. Taking expansions. Continuing to rally out, move out. Look, all the Marines are moving out. Forward position. Marines Far forward, Marines are the, the space gobblers. They're the escorts of this matchup. Escorting tanks and dropships and other great things. Whereas a slightly weaker Terran player may have tried to do drops in other places. Flash has just continued to hit one spot because he sees that there's weakness. He just bangs on one spot till it breaks down. You kind of function like the big bad wolf is Terran in this matchup, man. Just gonna huff and puff and blow the front door down. So great. Let's look at some other very key things that are going to happen right now. Keep in your mind, gobbling up space is Terran. Drilling one spot hard instead of multiple spots weekly. Okay, so Flash drilled this spot so hard that he managed to kill it off. I mean, Zerg's going to be able to rebuild because Dark Swarm, we just throw it down, no problem. Flash leaves Marines and Medics outside the front because he wants to just hold this space. He is pushed all the way far forward. Sometimes, um, actually, I'm a fan of leaving one control group here. Like, or ten Marines. Like, enough that you can box select them. This sort of thing. And let's look at what Flash does now. Flash is looking to continue to apply pressure as much as humanly possible. So he's going to move over to the right side. Marines moving in first. The escorts for the vessels. This little scan seems extraneous. It, it, why scan? We already have the detection here, right? Just seeing a little extra space here is great. These scans from Flash, they're almost just natural. It's like, I'm pretty sure I can attack this. Let me just check a little ways before. 
He's not trying to get some slick spot your hidden unit scan. He's like, I'm literally gonna be there in five seconds. Is this a good idea? Scans for it. Spends no energy on Irradiate. He doesn't need to. Irradiate is a important resource to manage. Look at this, N no Irradiates, no Irradiates, two Irradiates, one Irradiate, one Irradiate. Well, like four or five Irradiates. I lost count because I suck at adding small numbers together in a short period of time. Just ask anyone who watches my Hearthstone stream. Marines kind of escorted everything forward. And you've been hearing me say just drill one part hard, drill one part hard. Think of it like this. If you're Terran and you're devoting almost all of your focus to one location, Zerg is going to have to also devote almost all of his focus to that one location. And then you will see what he has and you can make the decisions that are best there. So that's why these vessels are moving way the hell forward, because Terran can just see what's going on. Oh, look, Defilers, nice, let's just kill those. We're gonna rewind 45 seconds and just see the incredible elegance of this idea. If you're going hard in one location, you can just make the decisions, because it's very likely that your opponent is having to commit a lot of resources there too. Terminus Thrall, good to see you. We go here. Marines, of course, escorting. Are there any defilers? No. No scan needed. Surround and kill. Oh, there are defilers. Do I see any scourge? Literally, I just don't see them. Uh, you know, let me just keep going. I still just don't really see any Scourge. I see, like, some slow Hydras. Okay, cool. Small judgment calls made. Small judgment calls made back to back to back to back. This is awesome. Killing stuff off. La 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 la. Alright. I think that was pretty good. I think we did some damage over here. I recall Zerg was taking an expansion in this location. Sometimes scans like this, I think, are really nice when you're trying to prepare to do some sort of cutesy, droppy stuff, which uh, Flash built two dropships to be able to do this. So we can see that Flash is kind of going from front door to front door, from front door to front door, irradiating whatever he can, just irradiating to try to knock it down, to buy himself a weak point. If the Marines weren't here, the Defiler wouldn't have to be here. Because the Marines are there. Defilers have to show up, and then they can be irradiated. Look at this drop. Terran's moving his full Marine force over as a way to escort these lovely little dropships in. And funnily enough, Flash was the guy who popularized this. Most of the time, you'd see Terran players who would, like, load up a dropship here and move up this side path and try to drop here while hitting this place. That's actually good for Zerg. If I'm Zerg, I'm pretty happy about this. Look at this. Zerg would literally just Dark Swarm, send some Zerglings, and be fine. Or send some Lurkers and be fine. It's when there starts to be Marines in an open area that stuff becomes a pain in the ass. So remember this, if you're doing dropship tech stuffs, you can sometimes do little drops here and pick off expansions, but a lot of times, Zerg struggle when the units for Terran are in open spaces. If you drop like this, there's lots of room to retreat, to micro, to do all sorts of good stuff. And Flash escorted these dropships here in just a beautiful way. Here's another really nice place to drop, right here. Move your whole army here, you get the two dropships and drop them right there. Imagine if Flash had come here and it was Dark Swarm, Dark Swarm, Scourge. Flash would take these two dropships, all of this bio, all of these vessels, and just drop here in this open area. Very hard for Zerg to allocate all of his units properly. 
And you only need Zerg to fold in one position one time. You heard me say that Marines are the escorts of this matchup, right? Look at that. Like, six to eight Scourge thrown at this dropship. Marines are right there in order to defend it. Oh, also we're kicking some ass. I'll talk about the tactics that we're seeing out of Zerg here in a moment. Because they're great too. I actually literally do not remember who wins this game. But... Same old, same old. Moving forward. All right, we got some lurkers here. And... Yeah, there, there's absolutely no defilers here at all. There's a nice little move that I actually don't recommend you do too much. But fire bats do full damage under Dark Swarm. And so you can defensive matrix some fire bats and run them in. And if there's one or zero lurkers... You can just rip everything to shreds, man. But fire bats also die pretty quickly anyways. Yeah, some cheesy droppy stuff. That's annoying. I want you to appreciate the counter response from Flash here. There is a drop with Dark Swarm and obnoxious stuffs in the main base. Flash continues to push out. Look at this, just trails of Marines moving forward across the map. And for the most part, Flash has just bounced from here to here repeatedly. This is good late-game biotactics from Terran. This is just good, solid late-game biotactics. And see, there's... A drop that's happening here, and these things are the most deceitful drops you will ever do as Terran. You will convince yourself that this is a shit right here. I love doing this sort of thing. These are only okay. You need to be in a good enough position to where it's okay if you lose these. Because so often, if you do this quickly, the Zerg player will be like, Yep, I already have two Defilers, three Lurkers. Clean that shit up, no problem. So this is a kind of cute tactic that... It's so conditional, I don't even care to talk about it much. Which is running through the Dark Swarm with, like, six Marines, just to kind of see what's up. Uh, it's vastly superior to scan and move forward with vessels. And if you can get up here and pick off... The Nidus, which he doesn't quite do. Then that can be tremendous. But it's amazing how, if you are doing a good job of moving forward aggressively, this is most of the Zerg army. Like, if I go to full vision, that's mostly it. And this is a 5 2 Ultralisk. I mean, this guy is hard as hell to kill. Hello, I'm in Engineering Bay. Hello. I'm so impressed that Hero is able to get all these expansions up while all this stuff is going on. I mean, this is a pretty incredible um, wherewithal from, uh, from Zerg. And now finally, oh no, the Terran player has kind of been moderately, marginally broken. Doesn't change the fact that these are some excellent, excellent tactical plays the Flash has been doing throughout here. This is the moment where Flash has lost a little bit of forward positioning. But this is still okay. Flash has spent so much time pushed out that now that all those Zerg units are coming back, Terran has an opportunity to recoup. This is where I actually do kind of like little drops like this. Not necessarily the fact that Everything's flying past a spore colony. But this is where I do like plays like this that kind of mess with Zerg. If you're having trouble moving out onto the map. This is good not because it will kill this expansion. 90% of the time it doesn't. It's because it then lets you regather yourself and move back out onto the map. If you looked at the situation and said who is ahead or behind... 
Uh, a lot of Terran players would feel really, really bad intuitively looking at this due to just how the minimap looks. Because, God, if it's like Dark Swarm, Army, Dark Swarm, oh my God, I'm going to lose all my production, right? It's a few Dark Swarms away from death. Flash has quite a nice advantage, though, with all these bases in the bottom side, this base in the middle, and way, way more importantly, enough units to begin a big push back out to scoop up space into the map. I actually find this moment to be, like, really funny. <laughs> because Flash, after just non-stop attacking this top left area, regathers some troops together and begins to go attack that top left area. Again. Zerg lost focus a little bit here. Totally okay. That shit happens. See how different this feels? This is why it's so important to stay pushed out to the other side of the map. I really think the biggest reason that Hero was doing so well is that Hero's just been playing incredibly. But there comes a point where the little drop over here, the little drop at this backside here, the fact that Terran's pushing so far forward here, what do we think is the game's status right now? When I would try to learn Terran vs. Zerg from the Terran point of view, I would think to myself that I was losing right now. Oh my gosh, it's half map versus half map, but I don't have any control. But look at how Zerg's doing. Remember this expansion up here? Lost a ton of drones. This expansion hardly has any drones. Has a gas geyser, sure, but this is having to be rebuilt. This is just a little measly mineral base. Main base has lost a lot. This died and had to be rebuilt. It has two dudes. Ah, uh, this is almost mined out. There's actually just not that many drones. There's like five, two, five, two, six, uh, five. Zerg feels and looks a little bit like he's able to put on pressure just due to how intimidating it is to not have vision. But this is part of the reason why, if you are the Terran player, it's so critical that you're able to apply lots of pressure at that point in time because if Terran, for one second, has more stuff than you and can push through just once, that's literally the end of the game. So here, when Terran moves forward, not only does Zero not have enough to defend that expansion, but throughout the rest of the map, I, I don't actually think he has defilers. He's building some ultras. There's some scourge. I see no defilers here. I see... There's a defiler that just died. There's one ultra. And look at this giant Terran force moving. Giant Terran force moving. Flash is even responsible about moving out when he is in the midst of receiving pressure. I think this is great. I think this is actually fantastic. I want to re rewind back to... We're going to go to the 14-minute mark. And I want to look at things from the perspective of the Zerg player. Because even though Flash wins this game, I want to note how important, during this period of time, just playing defensively is. Because Hero... Shit. Zero gets himself into quite a good position doing the most basic form of tactics here. The first one is pretty good amount of lurkers. You can defend a thin ramp with two or three lurkers. Once you get onto the open, you need minimum four. So we got a minimum of four lurkers here. Great. One Defiler and Lurkers built in. Often this Defiler will hang back here with some Scourge in between. Similarly, we have some Lurkers here. And a Defiler held back. So much of the tactical play from Zerg takes two forms in the late game. One is, am I building a Defiler in each location? Cool. I actually tried to count. I try to say, I have two defilers now. All right, I'm gonna build two more. I have four defilers now. There's little tricks to this where if there's a hotkey you don't use very much, like a control zero, 
you can hotkey every defiler you have as zero just to be able to count. You don't ever go zero A. You don't ever use the zero hotkey to attack, but you want to try to keep a count of how many you have to make sure you have like one or two here, one or two here, and that's enough. Anytime you start to get an excess of units, tiny counterattacks are good. And in particular, these are gorilla-ass counterattacks. These are working around the edge of the screen. These rarely ever want to go through the middle of the map. They're trying to find a spot where Terran is weak. Because if at any point Terran ain't paying attention, that's good game. We'll see a beautiful example of this in a really quick game of Hero, not Zero, Hero versus Haya. In the mid 2000s, the theory for Zerg was that Zerg needed three, maybe four gas. Uh, you said it wrong? I didn't say it wrong. We're going to see a, a hero game after the zero game. So, yeah, take that. Uh, in the mid-2000s, the theory was Zerg needs... Yeah, Flyway Spade, I was correct. The game that we're going to see is a hero game. Not a zero game, a hero game. This is a zero game. <laughs> Boom. See, I'm still totally fucking correct. I'm the man, Flyaway Spade. But I got to be honest with you, man. You're hitting on the, the true point, which is why do all the Korean players have names that rhyme? They got to cut that shit out for my sake. I've lost track of my point. Let me get back onto it. In the mid 2000s, the uh, prevailing theory was that Zerg really only needs this fourth gas geyser, and then he can begin to build sturdy units like Ultralisks. Yeah. As time went on, players like Flash, like Fantasy, even Nada was still doing a great job with this here. Terran players were so good at just killing the Zerg and messing with the Zerg that the tone shifted to ultra-defensive play. So Zergs would say, well, since I'm going to defend anyways, let me just expand. See this little counterattack that I was just talking about? This is the essential tactic. Sometimes it lets you walk to his base and kill it off. The rest of the time you've gained space. Gain space, take a base. No problem. So, why is it important to have one defiler in the correct spot? It's to avoid stuff like this happening. You'll see also why the Nidus Canal is often nearby the workers. It's to be able to run the workers away. I have seen some players say, Ah, if I can get a Nidus from here to here, I don't need one in the main base. You're wrong, you need one in the main base. So, at a time like this, this is where, this, this is a hard part right now. Not pulling off this miracle defense. You'll pull off Miracle Defenses all the time. It's stopping and going, okay, where are my Defilers at? Okay, I have one here. I have one here. Where is the other Defiler? Is it coming out? Is it hidden here? Have I just been spamming Zerglings? In the middle of all that nonsense happening, Zerg needs to have started additional Defilers. Defiler hasn't moved. This is a very scary spot to be in, is Zerg. When you're going, where's my Defiler? Where's my Defiler? Where's my Defiler? Ah, here it is. Okay, there we go. And the big reason this expansion wound up falling is because Zerg just did a little bit of slow Defiler reallocation. I totally just watched a fight for a moment and lost track of what I was thinking about. But, anyways, um, 
the uh, while all this is going on, the fact that Zero is able to establish another expansion is awesome. If I'm going to be defending, let me continue to get valuable things to defend. What's this second Nidus Canal about? Second Nidus Canal from here to here, making sure there, there is a double Nidus defense here because it is so easy to just lose this base. And instead of saying, okay, I'll just get this fourth gas and then I'll go for Ultralisk, there's a few key things that Zergs have changed to do differently. One is heavy plague usage. Throwing plague down on the vessels, throwing plague down on the marines, doing whatever can be done to just make this army soft and squishy as can be. If there's enough pressure, all the energy must be spent on Dark Swarms. Doesn't this look horrifying from the Zerg perspective? <laughs> So one is, you know, these, these heavy plague usages. But the other is drops. You saw me select this hive earlier before I began to talk about Ultralisks. Zerg, Zerg players nowadays are favoring researching drop quickly to do little counterattacks to avoid the fact that so many Terran players are experts at pushing out across the map. There's another very small subtle but like infinitely more helpful tactic that Zero's doing. He's moving his overlords out onto the map. He knows he wants to go drops, so he's going for overlord speed and overlord drops, but the instant his speed is done, he's throwing it down on a lot of these side paths. Which, on one hand, when the hell's Terran gonna move up here? Not now, for certain. Are you kidding me? Like, like Ter Terran army is here. It's going to stay here. But these are greatly comforting to know where the Terran army isn't. And what's your whole struggle? Defiler allocation. You're trying to figure out defiler allocation. So vision, 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 vision. Yeah, excellent. And see? Once you have enough defilers to guarantee that you get a good dark swarm down, bam... That's when you can throw down a plague. What's great about the leading vessels for Terran? You're not getting your marines plagued. Getting your vessels plagued sucks, but getting your marines plagued really, really, really sucks. So. First goal, don't die. Don't die. God, can you believe how aggro flashes? Man, that's amazing. So, I mean, if you're, if you're zero... You're trying to make sure you have enough defilers. We have four here. I think we have one over here. No, we have zero over here. So there's currently only four defilers that exist in the whole wide world. So what kind of drops do you do as zero? The great thing about researching drops is that you just defend until right when you feel a little safe. And then you take two or three overlords and counter where do you counter to? Wherever the hell you can work your way into. Expansions are great, but remember, doing guaranteed damage is better than doing big risks. It's better to drop here and guaranteed kill some supply depots than it is to try to drop here and risk losing everything. So this drop is obnoxious as all hell. But the Defiler is just chilling here till the very instant he's needed. Don't you see what's great about having this second Nidus canal here? For this one to pop out and to get ready to go, go, go. Boink. Super easy to throw down one. Gobble up another and then plague. Critical tactical structure. The second Nidus canal. So I think that, um, you know, Zero's very close to stabilizing. He's still just taking massive damage, but I mean, look at that. He has another base over here. Oh, he's actually kind of got a lot of stuff. He's actually kind of got a lot of bases. This is actually pretty impressive. Honestly, I think that if Zero had maybe just been managing his bases a little more closely, like building out of this one a little more, that's all it takes. But everything Zerg's really doing at this point in the game is thinking defensively. Until, at long last, after you've been quietly defending 
and upgrading. Don't forget how important the upgrades are. You burst into action and motion with lots of ultralisks. Again, in, in, in the mid-2000s, the prevailing theory was if you get these ultras out, bam! That's when you win, baby. You're trying to get to 12 ultras. Terrans are good enough that they build enough tanks that they just shit all over you. Eh, it's not going to do. So, more and more, it's about the Defiler getting good plagues off and softening the army so that it can be finished up by these Ultralists. Um, so what I want to do is I want to briefly switch to um, one kind of weird game um, before I go into a mech example. Um, where is the game? I think it was the first one. Here it is. This is Hero versus Haya. Hero, not Zero. Hero. This is Hero versus Haya. Hello, Despy Cat. It's a pleasure to have you here on the show. Hello. I love my cats way too much. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. It's a good cat. Holy shit. All right, we're going to the ten-minute mark. Okay. So let me let me deposit my beautiful gray cat. Everyone say hi to Despy. Say goodbye to Despy. She's never going to come back again because she has a box. She loves her box. So at this point in the game, um, the Terran player has tried to make a play here at this expansion. This is really early in the game still. It's 11 minutes, but we're just now beginning to step into that uh, late game. Defiler, Ling, Lurker stuff. Look at the similarities. We see the lurkers here we see the extra sets of scourge to hold off against any drops i think there's not uh, just overlords here for vision no scourge soon enough scourge will be here but once one of these areas is feeling safe you heard me bring up the fact that uh little counter attacks are great i think terran hardly has any science vessels right now but you know it's fine All right. This is pretty surprising to me that Hero actually had the ability to do this in this game. Hero literally just hugged the left side of the map and walked up here and then got to just walk to the entrance. He just goes to the expansion and just burrows. Look at this shit. I don't believe it. This is rare. But not as rare as you'd think. It's not as rare as you'd think. This actually happens in each game that you play. You'll probably be able to get this to ha happen zero or one times in most games. Like like half the times you can just do this. Um, every attack will not be this easy, but eventually, if you have successfully worn the Terran player down, he's just gonna fold defensively in one of these positions. My cat is now on my mouse, which stinks. Because Zergs are being so defensive. Look at this intelligent defiler allocation. He has a close one. He has one that's tucked up here far away. This looks a little like a misclick, but this is actually okay to have another defiler all the way up here. Or another defiler all the way up here. Kind of spreading them out. And this is obnoxious as hell. What do we see over here? More Zerglings moving along this side of the map. In order to do some sort of little counterattack. Maybe there's a base over here. Hint, there's a base over here. We're just doing these small little counterattacks. Very defensive posturing for the Zerg player. Also, my cat is snuggling against my hand, so I have no more mouse control. It's time to do a keyboard cast. Because we got keyboard cat. When Terrans start to plant down mines, um, actually I'll cover that in the next episode. Not the next episode, the next replay. Um, I want to take a look at one last replay to try to cement some uh, considerations for late game tactics uh, when you're going up against a mech transition. This is such a great game. Let me go to the 13 minute mark. So at this point in time, we're just now stepping into this sort of late game period where 
Uh, whoops. Let's go back. Let's go back to 11. I just want to show this transition. I've talked about this transition quite a bit. But um, Terran will hit a point where he will be able to make a decision. Do I want to go um, super hard into Bio Vessel, like we saw in the first game of Flash and Zero? Or do I want to do what Sea Shield is doing here and switch into Mass Mech? Terrans like switching to Mass Mech because if you have enough bases, it's just so powerful. So you go Bio in order to get the bases. So first things first, <clears throat> we'll see from the Terran side of things some key similarities to the pure bio stuff. Marines moving out, but now not just for vessels, to be able to pick off overlords, to be able to let these vultures get really, really far forward and place mines. I mean, these are super up here. This is not plant the minefield here and plant the minefield here. I mean, this is like on the ramps, on the bridges. Building command centers in slightly weird positions just to make sure that there's absolutely no zerglings that could prevent us. During this period of the game, if you're going for a mech switch, you need these bases, you want these bases, and vultures are the stepping stone to be able to do it. Vessels, marines, no problem. They easily deal with mutalisks. No problem at all. It's the lings, defilers, lurkers, and ultras you need to worry about. And this is what these vultures are about. Remember how I showed you, just in the last replay, this skirting along the side of the map to do ling, lurker stuff? If you sent a zergling out, popped these, and then wandered ling, lurker, defiler like this, you'd have free access to this base. So essentially on all choke points, Sea Shield is planting lots and lots of mines. He's still doing some of these same tactics. Remember how I said lead with the marines and not the vessels? There you have it, why? But once a bunch of vultures get built, and you have, you know, like a control group or more of vultures that has thrown down and, uh, you know, planted a bunch of mines. Now you actually kind of have control over this map. You're still scanning, looking for weakness here or there. But your tenor is changing a little bit. More of your tactical consideration is less about barreling in, killing expansions, and dominating at this phase of the game, and way more about defense. Notice how there's mines pre-planted in the base to deal with these kinds of drops. You heard me say the instant Zerg feels alive and well uh, from the front due to things like due to things like this Zerg feels alive and well at the front and so Zerg's going to do drops like this so what does Terran do? Terran is just mining this up and over time Terran will get up to around 8 factories, sometimes more let's say 8-ish 8-9 is about the right number. After getting to around eight-ish factories, Terran is trying to just plant as many mines in the middle of the map as possible, push as ultra far forward as possible, and make sure that all these bases are defended. The weird thing tactically about late game play, if you're going for mech Terran, is that you'll lose a lot of SCVs, and that's okay. It's way easier to lose and retake bases with mech than it is with bio because tanks deal splash damage. So they deal damage under Dark Swarm, and mines deal full damage under Dark Swarm. His base took a beating, no problem. Mines, you know what? I think another base is in order. Let's go ahead and take that, boom. Eventually, Terran will have a large enough force by building off all of this stuff to be able to uh, maybe make attacks at expansions but there's a key difference between the attacks that a mech Terran player is doing. Mech is not trying to kill this, or this, or this, or either of these. That's what a bio player is trying to do. A bio player is trying to hit you in many, many places until one crumbles, and that way Zerg never gets powered up. Mech kind of lets Zerg power up. Mech is trying to deny this base, this base, 
on the right and this base here. That's it. You're saying my 5-6 base Terran will beat your 4-5 base Zerg. Let's watch that play out. So it's weird. It's this be aggressive to push out, scoop space on the map, and then use that space not to attack, but to expand and defend and try to get as many damn bases as I can. By the way, this is exactly why these Zerg drops that I've been talking about are so popular and strong. Because shit like this is so obnoxious. So look, few tanks, some Goliaths, a lot of mines, science vessels. Do that. Starport's still working overtime, producing science vessels this whole time. Never stop building science vessels, dude. Little drop here, you know. It's kind of whatever. Look how many mines are here. Mines, mines, mines. Yes. This does look quite a bit like Terran is being super aggressive. You have the option, once your tank count is getting high enough, to attack. You have this option. But I'd more so note how capable you are of defending. Tanks can be left around. They're much more difficult to deal with. It's not like a marine force where you can just throw down a dark swarm and they can no longer deal damage to you. Tanks and vultures moving out. The big concern I would have for Terran right here, not enough mines on this side. Just not enough mines. Lurkers are way worse against mech units. Zerglings are taking splash damage against mech units. See, there's, there's no vision here. There's nothing. Nothing at all. And that is where Terran winds up having points of weakness. Is when they don't see these huge masses of Zerglings just flooding in. I was kind of amazed that Zerg actually found this window of opportunity to do this. But it's because this giant area just didn't have any mines in there. And the funny thing is, at this point in the game, from here to the end, Hero gets dominated by this really nice Terran play. The key word I want you to think about here is defensive. Terran has the whole map, but Terran is saying, I'm going to defend on five base. I already have three. Once I clear this up, I'll just land this stuff, and I'll be fine. Mines and tanks dominate Ling Ultra. It's going to march everything here. Uh-oh, big... Gaping defensive hole, that's bad. We're going to want to mine that up very quickly. Huge attempted push in here. Dark Swarm will go down. It does not matter. Because tanks deal splash damage, they deal damage under Dark Swarm. And it's kind of fun for, you know... If you're Terran and you spent years and 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 years just trying to do crazy marine tactics, getting shut down by a plague or a dark swarm over here, having this is like a real breath of fresh air. We're actually building masses of units. Four, five factories producing tanks. Five base. Okay. Terran never really needed to kill this. Terran never really needed to kill this. Very different goal. It's denying this base, denying this base, and denying this base. So now Terran's just, once again, in a defensive posture. Very different, right? Like, bio play is all about, like, pushing out and then attacking and irradiating and dropping and trying to be as annoying as possible. This is like full map control. So, Hero is trying to do these kind of weird dropsy things. Sea Shield is just kind of Vulturing an Ultralisk to death. Has <laughs> just so many tanks, Hero, dude. Oh my god. And if you're Terran, you start to go, Okay, I don't want this to happen. I don't want this to happen. This is where the actual significant pushes occur. And they don't go deep. It's really half-map control. Cannot be stressed enough. Ouch. And so, the goal that Zerg needs to do is nearly what Hero's doing this game. Nearly, 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 nearly. Zerg just needs to have more bases faster and be pressuring weak locations with Lang Ultra. 
For a long time, this bottom left area was really getting pressured good by Ling Ultra. But now, at this point in the game, Sea Shield just needs to kill this. Big pushes by Zerg. Oh me, oh my. Zerg is just never breaking through this. This actually happens very slow and methodically. Very different from the quick, incisive movements of the Bioforces. More mines getting planted. Zerglings. We looked at in the core ZVT strategy, they're a little bit better at pushing through these tank vulture fields than any number of ultralisks are. It's a short hop, skip, and a jump to be able to get just barely in range of this expansion. And that's all that needs to be done. So this fifth base is looking kind of hard to hit. That's okay, we'll, we'll let Zerg have that fifth base. We're just going to push here and try to deny this while we build Command Center to take this base. Massive Zerg domination! And this is why I find this to be such a technical and difficult matchup for Zerg. Zerg does not have pretty much any units that are good at fighting against these forces. If you get enough Zerglings in overwhelmed positions, or soften them up by sending Zerglings in to pop the mines, you can break through. Zerglings, I feel like, are your best friend in this matchup. Zerg vs. Mech. And I gotta be honest, I'm not talking at this point, because it's, it's just kind of the same thing. It's just allocating a lot of tanks here, sieging them up, making sure that the production is good. We have lots of tanks in good positions, and then we're just trying to plant lots of mines, plant lots of siege tanks up, and be in good defensive positions. The more that we'll do real game analysis and look at real games, the more we'll get the opportunity to look at specific tactics and see how they are you know, changing the game and causing it to evolve and all that good stuff. But for the purposes of this specific game... Bye, guys purposes of this specific game. Do I have a splinter? Terran is just continuing to keep this mindset different. Not trying to attack and to kill off bases and to pressure and to weaken until eventually Zerg crumbles on three to four to five bases. No, you let Zerg do that whilst you take the whole damn map. Really kind of a cool switcheroo. I likes to watch this it. Look at that. Just walking over here. Picking off this expansion. I'm going to skip forward just a little bit because it's a little bit more wandering around. Oh yeah, Terran even takes this expansion just continues to defend. And I get so frustrated playing against a Terran player when I'm in this spot as Zerg where I've spent 40 minutes just mining and 1A'ing and I just cannot get another base up because Terran just cut the whole map in half, moving left and right with all sorts of tanks. God, tanks are such a good unit. All right. That was a little longer than I expected. We'll have to work on my timing for later episodes, whatever. we got to talk about ZVT. So the, the real takeaways that I want you to glean that are different from Mech is what I was saying at the end. It's a much more defensive mindset, a much less attack-focused mindset. On Thursday, I will not be doing a show because I will be down in Los Angeles because the Brood War Zotac Remastered Cup will be getting cast by me in control, tasteless, and artosis. So look forward to having you tune in for that over the weekend. And then I'll be back next week for some more Let's Learn StarCraft episodes. I'm leaving you. I'm leaving you. Goodbye. Woo!